it's Sunday. It's get to sleep in day. Sort of. Still woke up early, but I didn't get out of bed until late, so that's something. Hank's man, he's he's me out here. He's right here. Hi buddy. Is it breakfast time? Is it breakfast? It's supposed to be really hot today, so probably not a lot of outdoor things going on. A little bit. Probably not going to spend a ton of time out here today just because it's going to be really hot and our tractor, which I love. My, the tractor is one of my favorite things about the farm. It has a flat and it's going to need some repair. We've been kind of limping it along for a while, but it's just time to get it fixed. So I thought this morning we would talk a little bit about the pigs, about why I decided to get pigs and our plans for them and a little just mini lesson on cootie coonies. I'm not an expert, but I did a lot of research when I started trying to choose a pig. Good morning. It's blue for kitties time. It's always get fed first. So about a year and a half ago, probably two years ago, we still had chickens. I always recommend to people who are starting with a farm or homesteading that you start with chickens. Chickens are super easy to manage. They don't require a lot and they're fun. Laying chickens, laying hens, uh, a lot of fun. And most of the time you can have chickens in your neighborhood. And I had decided I wanted to get rid of my chickens for a lot of reasons we'll talk about in just a minute. we got to feed the girls. I don't think I can hold the camera and feed 10 really hyper girls. We'll see. You guys are wondering, I sweep all that off every morning so that the poop number one doesn't eat the um, the plywood and just to give them a clean surface to sleep on. And then I muck out the hay because that was not fun to muck out. Three months of hay. Here's our sad tractor tire. Okay, as I was saying, about a year and a half ago, I've had the pigs for two years. Yes, no, 18 months. Really wanted to get rid of my chickens, my laying hens. We don't eat a ton of eggs. We just don't. I love eggs. It's just not something that we were eating a lot of. So trying to figure out where to put all these eggs. We probably had 15 laying hens and a rooster. And we liked hatching them. It was just such a fun process. But the thing that I struggle with here is I have two pastures to put things in. And I was really struggling with parasites that year, managing them. We had drought conditions. There just wasn't a lot of grass. Wow. Sorry, mosquito. There wasn't a lot of grass. Okay, settle down. To be shared. And 
we kind of had a makeshift chicken coop and it just was not it just wasn't working to have goats and chickens in the same pasture and I needed to move them we needed to have a different solution <laughs> here come the girls are you coming princess oh did you find it come on gobbles gobbles has pink eye poor girl looking a little better. She's not real happy with me right now because I keep treating her eye with this spray. And I'm sure it stings, but it's what you gotta do. Anyway, I'll walk over here and show you guys the chicken coop. Just wasn't working. So my idea is let's just get rid of the chickens for a while and we can rethink coop, where we want to put them, how we want to do, how many we really want, what kind we want. We'd had, um, and our chickens were older, so some of them were dying just because they were old chickens. They just weren't as healthy as they could be, and that was because I wasn't taking care of them as well because I was very focused on my goats. So I decided I need something different. We're going to get rid of these chickens. And then I started thinking about what could we do. And we'd always really been interested in having pigs. But we live in town. And we have neighbors. Really close neighbors. And pigs are really clean animals, but they stink because they like to roll around in mud. And they poop all in the same spot. So they're super easy to toilet train because they like to poop in a spot. So the pig doesn't actually smell. And the idea of a huge commercial pig in with my tiny goats just didn't appeal to me. So I started really looking for a smaller option for a homestead pig. I really wanted something that I could feel comfortable sharing space with the boy goats. Are you pretty? Look how pretty you are with the boy goats and um, utilize that pasture instead of my girl's pasture and something that would help maintain the grass and I started looking kind of at American guinea hogs and some other different um, breeds of pig and I settled on the Cooney Cooney. I just kind of happened upon them. Somebody that we follow ended up getting some about the time that I started considering them and that was really helpful. So if you watch farm videos on YouTube, you should go check out Danelle over at Weedem and Reap. And they got Cooney Cooney figs. Duke's helping. Definitely. Not distracting at all. <laughs> and they're just a really, we're a really great solution for us. We didn't have a ton of space, so I couldn't put them in their own pen and have easy access to water and something that, because we both work full time, we try to make things as easy as possible. And so for me, having water nearby, housing, I don't always have time to make new housing for every animal that comes on the farm. And so I wanted to be able to utilize something that I already had in place. I needed this animal to be something that I didn't have to spend a lot of extra time taking care of that it could just go in the pasture and be there and drink water with everybody else and eat with everybody else. And so the Cooney Coonies were a good option. They're a grass-fed pig, which is kind of weird. So they just eat grass and grow fat. We do feed ours a little bit of grain, but it's not to help them gain weight. It is just literally to train them to come to a spot. So when we first got Pork and his brother, chop they learned really quickly how to escape this guy was real unhappy about it he doesn't like the pigs he just doesn't and what they learned is that I came in the gate every day and so they learned to lift and push on the gate together and get out in the backyard pigs are very smart so all right, hi, buddy. Um, I needed them to just kind of go out here and be 
in the pasture and not worry about them. And so again, if they ever escape to be able to have a cup or a bucket or something, them to come running. For pigs, it's really not that hard. I've already trained Petunia basically with tomatoes. Tomatoes are her favorite thing. Pork chop's favorite thing is bananas. Isn't it, buddy? And so even though I think there are very few animals that are simpler than chickens, these guys really have been easier. So he started out with pork. He's pork chop now, but pork and his brother chop. Just to see if we like them. They're both boar, they're both boar pigs. They're intact males. And I decided we would keep one as our breeding boar and get a female if things worked out. If not, we would just process both of them and move on. So we got them when they were about six months old. And process time for a cuny cuny is about a year. They grow, grow a little slower because they're grass fed. And so you can see little Toonie was born in May and pork chop is two in the fall. This fall he'll be two. Um, so they grow out a little slower. We got 150 pounds of pork off the pig that we processed. So if you have a big family, maybe that's not enough for you and you're gonna need a big, big pig. But for us, that was perfect. We've been really pleased with the quality of the meat. It's a higher fat, redder meat than a typical pig. Um, the taste has been fantastic. Um, very pleased with the cuts of meat, the hams and the bacon and all those things. The other thing that I really liked about these guys, Tuni Tuni, can you look at me? Probably not. We're super interested in cleaning up like but they have a squished nose. Piggy piggy. See how his nose is kind of flat and not long like the typical pig nose. Like if you, Wilbur from Charlotte's Web, had a really long snout. This guy does not. It's this short snout. They still root around, but just not as aggressively. So they don't turn over the soil quite as quick. And because they eat grass, they're not as prone to digging. So you can see they've dug out this little spot and this is mostly because it stays wet. And then they've dug out the spot by their pig pool. So something else again, to put them out on this pasture, I couldn't afford for them to turn over all this grass and it be mud because I have these friends that need to eat and I inevitably have a bottle calf or a sick mama cow um, that needs no, that needs to eat the grass. So I couldn't do that. So the flat face pig definitely helped with that aspect. They're also not aggressive. I mean, you guys have seen my pigs for the last few videos. Hi, buddy. Um, and they get along with these guys really well. They don't bite the goats. They kind of hem and haw at them to let them know, hey, I don't want to argue over this food. But they're really easy to get along with these guys. The breeders that we have gotten, that we got them from, did recommend not putting them in with babies because Nigerian babies are so small that they probably would think they were snack sized. So that's something. That's basically why we want the Cooney Cooney, just because I can put them out here in this pasture. I don't have to supplement them. I don't have to worry about what they're eating. They eat grass and grow. They just drink water. They're extremely hardy. These pigs very rarely get sick or injured. You worm them just like you do goats and cows, but they're not especially parasite prone which is a huge deal to me because goats are so parasite prone and it is a full-time job it feels like. So for somebody who works full-time and is trying to do this on the side, these were just such a good option for us. And I've been really pleased to process one and it tastes great. It provides a really great amount of meat. This just worked out so well. And so we've been really pleased. Okay, 
quick history lesson on the Cooney Cooney pig, just for fun. So the Cooney Coonies that are in the United States today originally came from New Zealand. They probably originated in Asia and were brought to New Zealand sometime in the 1800s. Nobody's super sure about that. But in the 1970s, there were only about 50 purebred Cooney Coonies left in New Zealand, and they were um, cultivated by the Maori people, and they had them just running around their villages. They were these wonderful pigs that wouldn't roam. They were super domesticated, and they would just run around and kind of stay in one place. And these two wildlife park owners in New Zealand found the pigs and decided to save the breed. So they started breeding them in the late 70s, early 80s, and kind of brought the breed back. Um, and so after a while, they decided that it would be prudent to bring the pigs out of New Zealand as well into the UK. And so they took the first Cooney Coonies, left New Zealand in 1992 to go to the UK for their breeding program. And then additional pigs were sent again in 93 and 96. And the Cooney Cooney didn't come to the United States until 1996. And so there have been five um, times where they've imported Cooney Cooney pigs um, over the last few years, 96, 2005, 2010, and 2012. So they're a heritage breed pig. They're, um, you know, part of this conservation effort to um, breed this pig and save it. They're no longer close to being extinct, which is great. And they're providing pasture-raised pork all over the world now. They're just a great little breed, and they've been cultivated for a lot of the reasons that I've already talked about, that they're smaller, they're very chill, um, and friendly personality, and that's one of the things that they actually judge them on. So if you were to take your Cooney Cooney pig to a show, and it was mean, then it wouldn't fit breed standards. They have to be super sweet and laid back, and that's just part of the breed style. Um, they're just a really great pig. So that's your little mini lesson on Cooney Coonies. I find that really cool that these are sort of an imported pig that... As a heritage breed trying to grow more of in the United States and to think that there have only been four or five breeding pairs brought to the States and my guys came from one of those pairs is pretty cool. So hope you've enjoyed this little mini lesson on Cooney Coonies.
I hope you've enjoyed this little mini lesson on our Cooney Coonies and why we chose them, why we um, moved away from chickens and just moved to pigs. We'll probably have chickens again one day. We grow beef at this point, which a lot of other people don't aren't able to do because we have the space. So we're actually trying to figure out a way to co-op with somebody for chicken meat and eggs in exchange for beef or pork or milk because those are things we can produce that maybe not everybody can. I loved our chickens. They just weren't a good fit for us at the end and we may decide to do them again one day. We'll see. Uh, we grew meat birds in our backyard. Did not enjoy it. Sorry, Jeremy just pulled in the driveway so Duke just took off. Um, so I hope you enjoyed this video. We'll talk, um, you know, when we start to breed Petunia in May, she'll be old enough to breed April, May-ish. We'll start talking about plans for farrowing and plans for babies and what we're going to do. And I hope you guys follow along. I look forward to that. Um, new experience of pig birth. Let's see how that goes. Got pretty good at the goat, bir goat birthing, so I think I can handle pigs. So leave me a comment if you like this video, if you have other questions about Cooney Coonies. Like this video, subscribe to the channel, and read the little notification bell so that you'll know every time I put out a new video. See you guys later.